Yeah, it's like 500 bucks. I would have cried. So I don't really know what's going on here. We got, they're like all the same. They'll say HP ink on them. So all they sell is HP? Uh, oh, they have eight, well, these are laptops though. It's a slim tower. I don't know. I mean, it's like really what, small, dude. I'm betting, what's on the front? It's an Intel something. It says Intel inside. Do you need help with YouTube? Are you ready to take the next step and make your channel bigger? All right, well listen up. I got just a thing for you. It's called TubeBuddy. It's an extension tailored for YouTube and it offers all kinds of tools. One of my favorite is the Tag Suggester and another one of my favorite is the Best Time to Upload feature. But that's only to name a few. So go check it out for yourself in the link down below. It's so cute. Oh God, it's a Celeron? Oh. That's a Celeron, Celeron 4900. LGA 1151. Wow, it supports all these. Oh, it supports Ace Gen? Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, uh, so it's DDR4, well, obviously. It has four gigs pre-installed memory upgrade. There's two DDR4 sockets. It can take up to eight gigs. Let's walk so up to him and be something. like, will you take 200? <laughs> <laughs> you can always just get that, you know, 10, 15, see what I happens. I was wondering, just try to do that first and see what happens. Upgrade the RAM. That's true. SSD. Fuck's a fix me stick. Wow. Yeah, so this uh, lady was helping us get these external hard drives from the back, so we should be here back any minute now. I want to see this. I see this bad boy. This is it. <laughs> Look at this. It's the Lake of Kentucky. So we have this slimline desktop PC. Uh, that's what happens when we try to film with cats. So we have this HP slimline desktop back at the house, and it's all wet, but we don't really care because we're gonna do a live freaking unboxing once again. You guys have not seen one of these in years, so let's just get right into it, make sure we cut the top open. I kind of missed a little bit. Dude, they're hybrid. No freaking way. What do we got in here? What do we got? Uh-oh. Oh, oh, oh power Is it a laser? Cord. It, oh. It's a laser map, dude. Shut up. Value. Wow. So here we go. Let me get in for that. Is it ready for this? <laughs> oh, it's kind of choppy, but you know, it worked. I'm not going to lie though, dude. So how do you feel about the build quality? Uh, let me touch it real quick. Let's see. We got it's sturdy. It's pretty sturdy. It is metal. Not it's not lie. plastic. This isn't some uh, super cheap PC case. So in the front, we do have a media card reader. We have two USB 3s. I think that's what it means by SS, right? Yes. Okay. So we got USB 3s. We have a headphone jack. Um, and we have a, actually a DVD reader. I couldn't even remember the name of it anymore. Do they have those anymore, dude? <laughs> I was like, what's this? Oh, well, we so, got a lot of USB ports. Yeah, there's actually a bunch of what looks to be like USB 3s, some USB 2s. We have um, actually multiple video. Why the hell is this a serial port? Um, we have a serial port. We have all the typical audio jacks. Um, I don't remember what so the default is HDMI yeah. out. But, I mean, yeah, it's pretty basic. We do have PCI lanes right here, which gives me hope that, that this thing's profile. upgradable or low profile DVD reader. We actually do have a full stick of DDR4 RAM. Okay, so it is And it's full four gigs. Okay. So there's actually another lane right below it. So we can get this bad boy up to eight gigs. And we have the Celeron 4900, really baller, like probably the best dual core you can get. Best dual core in the market, I'm hands down. Beats the G3258, whatever the hell, I don't even remember what the name of it is anymore. It just, it hands down beats it. This is the best processor. Better than a Threadripper. So this is actually the best PC on the market um, for the price. So you get a fully mechanical RGB backlit keyboard. You have a um, multi-position DPI dipstick dual core gaming mouse. Um, it's fully wireless compatible. Uh, we have a, like I said, about six foot Alienware extension power cable. So, I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I'm kind of feeling the um, deal vibe aspect of this. So we're gonna try and turn this thing. Oh God, the lights flickered when I plugged it in. Let's just talk about real quick before you start that this is a 80 plus gold power supply. Yeah, it's it's 80 plus gold. I mean, I'm Why? impressed. But I'm impressed. <laughs> so that means that not only is this thing small and compact, and where's the power button, but it's also very <laughs> energy efficient. I think it's just right here. Very bad power. Wow. Button. It's quiet. Quiet ish. Stick your finger in the fan. Oh! Okay, right, hop up on eBay. DDR4 RAM. So, obviously, this is really not the ideal way to spend money on a computer because this computer alone 
from Walmart sets you back about $300. Now for granted, it is brand new. It is DDR4. It does have a really good upgrade path. You can actually put like a newer i3 or i5 or i7 in this and it all is compatible. It does have the other slot for RAM, which we're doing now. It does have an extra M.2 along with one of these slots already being taken up with a wireless adapter. And then of course the fact that you can put a low profile graphics card into it. But where it kind of lacks is the fact that it's $300 just to get the computer and then the stuff that we have here will set you back about an extra $200 depending on whether you can find things new or used. So all in all we're about $500 in and we're still stuck with a Intel dual core and a 1050 at the end of the day. So is it really worth $500? Not exactly, but that's not what we're trying to prove here. We're trying to see if we can turn the cheapest Walmart PC into a gaming PC. Alright guys, so we got everything buttoned up. Now the real question is, will this thing actually boot? Because when we opened it out of the box, we actually didn't even see if it worked first. We just kind of plugged it in, it turned on, it was really quiet, and then we just did all this. So now we're going to see if we can actually get back into Windows and then copy everything over to the M.2. So as I said guys, first game we're testing out is Fortnite. We are on 1440p, 60 FPS frame rate limit, which actually I'm going to go ahead and bump that to unlimited because I know you guys like it to be more accurate test that way but all high settings and whatnot it's gonna go to this weird looking place here so as you guys can see the texture is a little bit late loading in but overall though the fps is not bad i mean we're pretty much maintaining a a constant 60 they really the only real issues is that there are some slight stutters here and there but it's not anything like that makes me not want to play the game i guess you could say obviously if we lower the settings a little bit we could probably get some more consistent fps oh now i'm getting shot Ouch. Look at that, he had 7 HP. So I know some of you guys might think this test is a little bit stupid because yes, Crisis is a very old game and yes, this is Crisis 1. But we have everything essentially maxed out. Now this one I actually was able to get to 1920 by 1080 without any weird uh, things going on. I don't know if maybe it's just mainly Fortnite. I was having issues in other games, but for some reason 1920 by 1080 is working on this one. I, I couldn't tell you guys. I'm sure some of you in the comments will have some suggestions down below, but yeah, so we're just gonna throw this one in there. Uh, with every game, by the way, the FPS will be up here, and then this is just like a bar graph or chart. And then we basically have a combo graph down here just showing the FPS along with a little graph. But you guys can see though, even at like max settings on 1920 by 1080, we still get a uh, pretty solid like 45 fps without any like major stutters at all unlike with fortnite because this game is a little bit more graphics card intensive so that 1050 and then not even the ti version actually keeps up with a game like this pretty well but but the graphics are still amazing looking even for a game this old so here we have another kind of throwback game but a lot of people still like to see it played this is cs go and we currently have i believe everything maxed out and the game volume incredibly loud so showing you guys the settings real quick, you can see we have it basically set to like the preset settings essentially. It's pretty standard, um, most of it's high, a little bit of it's like medium and some disabled stuff, but it's just what's gonna basically run the best. It's the best optimization for this setup essentially. So as you can see, we're getting over 100 FPS. So actually, let's just go ahead and kind of go balls to the wall here and just max some stuff out. All right, so now we get everything maxed out, just kind of see what happens. So. Yeah, there's a lot more stuttering for sure. So this game, I would say, is a little bit more CPU intensive if I had to throw a guess out there, but it's definitely still playable even on high settings. Let's see what it's like when we actually go face to face with someone. Hopefully I can find someone. Yeah, so I mean, as far as like fighting and whatnot goes, it really doesn't decrease too much. Um, it looks like possibly when we're in more open areas, it might decrease a little bit more because right now we're getting uh, close to 60 FPS average and, and it like randomly spikes up to an insane amount, but still they're really impressive for a little dual core and a 1050 low profile that we're actually able to do this on a, essentially a $300 
Walmart uh, built PC. This game here is Fortnite's best friend PUBG. So we are at 1920 by 1080. We are on pretty much all high settings except for shadows. So we're gonna see how that goes. In the actual like loading, I guess you could say menu in a sense, we're getting like 50 to 60 FPS, uh, pretty constant with the uh, lag spike here or there. So far it's actually doing a lot, I mean really overall this computer is doing a lot better than I thought it would, because the 1050 really isn't that great of a graphics card and it comes in right at um, usually between 100 and 130 dollars, uh, brand new even. So it's really impressive that we're actually able to play these games on basically high settings with, like I said, a 300 dollar computer from Walmart. Now keep in mind this really is not like the best bang for buck at all it's just the fact that hey i was able to go to walmart and they have these computers at other walmarts and even like best buys and such uh, and it's one of the cheapest ones at a lot of them but it is on an upgradable platform that's the other really cool things you can upgrade it with the new i3s i5s and even i7 so obviously your kind of limited factor is the fact that the power supply is only 180 watts but it is a cold which is really interesting. So as you guys can see though, um, when we're actually parachuting down, we're at a really low, like 20 FPS. Now this is a really high um, traffic zone that we're dropping into. And I am truly awful at this game nowadays because I haven't played in forever. So we're gonna see how that, uh, something. Oh yeah, we got a guy right up in there and try and avoid that spot. But so actually, now that we're actually playing, you can see that in this high, a really intense zone you know it is getting like between 30 and 40 fps so that's uh i would say that that's kind of bad um some of you guys might think that's totally playable other guys are like oh my god you need a constant 60. i'm kind of on the middle it's really impressive the fact that we're playing on high settings and able to play it because a lot of computers that matt and i open oh, i'm already freaking dead a lot of the uh <laughs> a lot of the computers that matt and i actually build now i have no clue where that guy even was um they actually can't play games like this. I mean, they have a lot of trouble keeping up and just the fact that we're able to do it and obviously if we lowered the settings a little bit more, maybe medium settings, but a lot of people who play this game don't really worry about high graphics. They worry about the best FPS so they can have fast reaction time. So if we were to play on like medium settings, even low medium settings, this thing would do easy, do 60 FPS constant. And now we are testing the last game. This is The Forest, which is available for download on Steam and is a really good game. It has really nice graphics and we've actually been playing a decent amount of it on the live streams lately. But as you can see though, we're on 1920 by 1080. Once again, I did get it to work. Uh, the preset I thought was on high, but apparently it changed itself. So we're gonna go back up to high. And we're getting between, I would say 30 and 50 FPS. It's pretty much looking like we're at 43. Um, so it's definitely a playable FPS. We were getting 60 when we were on like a medium preset, which is probably what they put as optimized. And that's probably why it just automatically changed it for me. But 40 FPS is definitely playable. And I mean, just look at how beautiful this game is though. It, it looks really great and yeah, there's some really glitchy stuff that goes on in it too, but it's definitely playable at all high settings though. And like I said, just once again, this thing is just super impressive for the fact that it's just a true dual core from Intel and it's actually really cheap. I think you can get the uh, G4900 for, I want to say around $45. Um, they might even be cheaper used, but the whole idea though is that this does have an upgrade path and it is on a new platform and really the the main really the main you know when it all comes back to it idea why we did this video was because we were like hey you know what let's just see what happens if we go to walmart and buy the cheapest pc sight unseen we, we, had, we had no clue if they even had computers still like um we didn't even know if they would actually have them and they have these really cool new ones which i'm sure a lot of you have seen at best buy and walmart where they're like these pre-built kind of square-ish towers um, that are kind of goofy looking, but they actually come with like Ryzen's and stuff in them and they're really interesting. They have a lot of different price points and they're marketed as gaming computers. So we might have to try one of those out sometime. But if you guys like this video, let us know in the comments down below. And hopefully I gave you guys a nice good uh, benchmarking sesh this time. And we will see you guys later.